Will you pray with me the opening prayer in unison? This is the place of which you have awaited us. The sacred space of memories and dreams, of stories told to children, of songs sung to you, of praise offered to others. This home we call the church. Forgive us and have mercy on us. You are the God who brought our ancestors into freedom. Set us free from our pain. You are the God who is with us every moment. Open our eyes to your presence as we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. You may be seated. <clears throat> Greetings, my brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit, it's so good to look out and see all of you here this morning. And for our Sunday morning shout out, next Sunday, homecoming. Amen? Amen. All right, we'll have a 10 o'clock service with dinner following in the fellowship hall. And we hope that you will all come out, tell your friends and family, neighbors, co-workers to come to homecoming at St. Matthew's. Then next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we will go to the Annie Myrna Pfeiffer Chapel on the campus of Bennett College as we begin our 2014 revival. The Reverend Tilly Lynette Gatson will be the evangelist for the week. She was with us on last year, and we really enjoyed her. So St. Matthew's and Union Memorial are uniting in having a revival at Bennett College. We have had a revival team that has done outstanding work in pulling everything together. Uh, the flyers are, oh, you need to go to YouTube and put in St. Matthew's and Union Revival Ad 2014. We are on YouTube. <laughs> Next Sunday morning, uh, then the 28th, there will be no service here at St. Matthew's. We will all go to Bennett for Founders Day. Someone will be here, Mr. Allen said he would be here between 8 and 9 a.m. if you would like to come to bring your tithes and offerings. The offering that will be received at Bennett will not be for St. Matthew's, but for emergency scholarships at Bennett. So don't forget we got to pay our own light bill. So we want you to either drop it off or uh, you can give it next Sunday. That'll help. Now, in order for the leadership of St. Matthew's to be completely transparent and above board in financial matters and ministries, beginning the first Sunday in October and every Sunday thereafter, there will be a church news insert in your worship bulletins. It will show you the different ministries of the church. We will highlight them. It will tell you the income and expenses for the previous month. It will just show the totals. And if you are interested in what those <laughs> expenses are, all you have to do is ask, and we will make it available to you. Is Tony Pfeiffer here? All right, you never know the impact that you might have on the life of an individual. I received this letter just this past week. Dear Pastor Beverly, I hope this note finds you doing well. First of all, I want to thank you for sending me the church bulletin. It helps me to stay informed about my home church. William Pfeiffer died some years ago, 
and I was not notified. He played a major role in my life, and I would have attended his homegoing service if I had only known he had passed. I vowed not to allow anything like that to happen again. This is the, another reason I want the bulletin. Second, enclosed is a check for $300 that I am giving to St. Matthew's Boy Scout. I would like it to be used to help a scout in need. Christ's servant and yours, Derek Rose. And we want to thank Derek for this check for $300 to Troop 441 of St. Matthew. Other shout outs. Yesterday, I got up early. Tony, I'm sorry I missed the men's meeting. But um, I was at a football game, 9.30 in the morning, in the rain, in the mud, to see Brandon play. Brandon didn't get to play because Brandon forgot his mouthpiece. So this morning at the 8.30 service, Brandon was presented with two brand new mouthpieces. <laughs> if your child has something or if you have something and you would like for me to be there, just let me know. I will be delighted to come. I even helped the staff with the team, and it was a bunch of teams there yesterday, it was a jamboree, but we really did enjoy it. So let me know and I'll be there. We would like to welcome our guests, those who are worshiping with us this morning. If it's your first time and you would like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're from, that we might welcome you, we'll give you that opportunity. And I'm gonna start over here on this side. And as I start over here, if you will go look in the narthex, you will see Dr. Clive Dixon in action. <laughs> you remember when we sent him to John Hopkins? Well, Clive sent some pictures back and they are out in the narthex, Dr. Dixon. <laughs> All right, and over here on this side, this side and over here, how about over here and here? We got another Graham with us this morning, don't we, Reverend Curry? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I believe somebody from Clemson is back. Right. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I guess since I said Clemson, I should say A&T, Aggie Pride. <laughs> They, they beat Elon yesterday. All right, and over here in this section. And over here in the choir. And Sherry, it's always good to have you and Rochelle with us. And I like that. Hey, give me one of them. We are so glad to have all of you here. Let us now hear from our choir. I have been asked to give a prefix to the music that we are about to perform for you. The choir selection is entitled, A Prayer for Our Time. It is written by Joseph and Pamela Martin in response to the tragic events of September 911. It was composed the week of September 11, 2001. This anthem is an impassioned cry for God to give us courage in a time of need. It is a cry for the healing of our nation. It is a cry for peace and a testimony of trust in the providence of God. It incorporates the Navy hymn and theme, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. 
Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. This hymn was widely played over the radio and television, television following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. This new text lifts our request to God who restores, protects, defends, and heals, and it has been used at national memorial gatherings. May God bless our nation.
Good morning, everyone. Today's story is Rabbit and Squirrel, a tale of war and peace. Today's story is about a rabbit named Rabbit and a squirrel named Squirrel, who both love to garden and are next door neighbors, but they are not friends. They never speak to each other. They never share gardening tips or vegetables. Rabbit wakes up one morning and finds carrots and lettuce from her garden are missing. And she automatically assumes that Squirrel is the one responsible. She marches right over to Squirrel's house and confronts him. The next day, peas and tomatoes are missing from Squirrel's garden and he blames Rabbit and throws a rotten tomato at her house. Was that nice? No. Well, sadly, their fighting continues when all of the vegetables in both of their gardens disappear. Well, one day the true culprit arrives on the scene, a very large human hand. It chases both rabbit and squirrel deep into the dark woods and out of their gardens. Well, even though they're both in the woods together, they refuse to stop blaming each other, and they refuse to stop fighting. And the book ends with this line, one of these days, they'll grow tired of fighting, and then, hopefully, they'll grow, learn to grow something new. You see, the one thing that rabbit and squirrel never learn to grow is cooperation. They never learn to grow friendship. Do you think rabbit and squirrel were good neighbors to one another? No. Unfortunately, rabbit and squirrel did not realize their mistakes. They should have gotten, taken more time to get to know one another and they would have realized that they were fighting for the wrong reasons if only they would have talked through their problems. We can each create peace in our own lives by not jumping to conclusions and making sure that the bad feelings and the mean actions do not grow by taking time to understand each other. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today and every day. Teach me how to be a good friend. Help me to grow peace and understanding. Amen.
seated. Once again, we peep in on that impossibly impetuous disciple, Peter. From Matthew's Gospel, the 18th chapter. And you would think by now Peter would understand to keep his mouth shut unless he has engaged his brain. But Peter is like a lot of us. It just comes out and it came up. He says to the Lord, if a member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Well, I want to know which of you has a little notebook in his or her pocket. And every time somebody says something to hurt your feelings or insult you in some way, you write their name and put a one behind it. Okay, Coley Hooker, one. <laughs> Walt Brower, one, two, three. <laughs> we don't do that, surely. But do you know that there are some persons who offended us in kindergarten and we are still holding it against them? They have gone on with their lives, probably don't even remember our name. And we sit here holding something against them. Some of the hardest words for human beings to say are just three words. Now, fellas, I think our sisters have taught you how to say, I love you. Now, you might not want to say it, but if you want a roast for dinner, <laughs> you will say it. If you want your house clean, you will say it. If you want the peace that passes all understanding, you will say it, even if you got to go, I don't like it. <laughs> You're going to say it. We teach our children to say, I love you. Three words, but that means so much to all of us. But the three hardest words to say are, please forgive me. It is so hard for us to ask someone that we have hurt or offended in some way to forgive us. We will see them every day, maybe in the same household with them. And we don't say what needs to be said in order that the air might be cleared and we grow stronger in our faith and stronger in our love for one another. Please forgive me. Jesus goes on to tell another parable, and he's good at telling stories. And the synopsis of this parable is that there was a man who had a steward, and the steward owed him some money. And he didn't have the money to pay. Some of us have been like that and had to make that phone call. I don't have it right now, but I'll give it to you when I get it. Am I the only one? <laughs> the steward comes to the man and he says, I don't have it. There is no way I can get it. Can you give me some time? And because of the man's demeanor, the vineyard owner says, sure, I'll give you some time. And he goes off. And this steward who now sees somebody who owes him money comes up with an attitude. How come you ain't paid me my money? I want my money. I want my money right now. And the man says to him, 
I don't have it, but I will give it to you when I get it. Nuh uh, I don't want to hear that. I want my money right now. And then he begins to take the man's possessions. Well, the first man heard about it and he got upset. And because he had forgiven the steward, he now called into account everything that the steward owed him. I wonder what would happen to us if Jesus called into account everything that we owe him when we have asked him for forgiveness but yet have failed to forgive our brothers and our sisters. That's something to think about. In addition to please forgive me being the hardest words to say, three even harder words are you are forgiven. We will hold our lips together and our jaws tight rather than to tell somebody we have forgiven them for what they have done to us, yet we will stand and say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How can we ask God for forgiveness of our sins when we won't ask our sisters and our brothers to forgive us. And so this grudge, this anger begins to fester in all of us until it just grows all out of proportion and sin just erupts in us. Well, I don't mind starting off. My brothers and sisters of St. Matthews, if I have done anything to offend you in any way, if I have done anything to hurt you in any way, if I have done anything that bothers you or causes you spiritual discomfort in any way, Please forgive me. The ball is now in your court. So be it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. We open the doors of the church if there be one this day who would like to unite with our fellowship of faith. We invite you to come now. Give us your hand, your heart to the Lord. Or maybe this morning you just want to say, Lord, help me to forgive others as you have forgiven me. Maybe there's somebody from your childhood way back when that you need to let go of something in order that you can go the way Christ would have you go. We invite you to the altar this morning for prayer. Won't you come? Just a moment. Yes, ma'am. Not only Caroline, but all of our students who are away at college, and you know they get to that place where they think they know a little bit more than mama or daddy or anybody else ever could. Guide them. Won't you come now for prayer?
church say amen. amen. Don't forget, next Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, homecoming with dinner following. And at 7 next Sunday evening, we begin our revival, Sunday through Wednesday, on the campus of Bennett College. And on the 28th, no services here. We will be at Bennett. And I would advise you to get there early. Don't forget, someone will be here between 8 and 9 to receive your tithes and offerings. And by the way, we do have Sunday school for all ages. I had a large class this morning, so please uh, bring your young people to Sunday school. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all both now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.